Hey guys, Florian from Off to Lens here. We've been getting a lot of questions about the BMPCC 4K in our last videos, so I thought I'd take the time to answer your most common questions. So let's jump into it. Since I was using the first pocket for five years, a lot of people have been asking, does it still have that same cinematic look that Blackmagic is known for? In my opinion, yes. Whilst it's not exactly the same, the sensor being different and the first pocket really had that cinematic, soft, beautiful look. I think the new one might not have exactly the same look, but the color science, in my opinion, is better. It's definitely sharper and a better camera overall. I'd love to have the exact same look and image quality in terms of grain but I think I'd still pick this camera over the first one. So regarding the autofocus on this camera, it, it is not continuous, it's just touch autofocus. Works pretty well, especially if you still, if you start moving a lot or moving around, it might not work as well. It takes maybe like a second or two, it doesn't rack focus too much. Compared to other brands or other cameras such as Canon, uh, Sony, it will definitely feel slower. I wouldn't rely on it in a shoot, but I think it's a great addition and it works, works pretty well and it's a good starting point. So some of you have been asking if I tried recording on a SSD. So yes, I did. I've used those Samsung T5 SSDs. You plug it in, it shows up like a normal media. A few of you have been asking if recording on the SSD allowed me to shoot higher frame rate or in RAW in 4K 60p. Um, I haven't found any difference in shooting with the SSD and the CFast. I'd rather use CFast just because it's much easier, you don't have to worry about the extra cable or mount the, the SSD on the camera. I'm waiting for an SSD that should arrive next week from a different brand, so I'm very keen on trying that one as well. So our latest video was shot in 4K DCI RAW lossless 60p and a few of you have been asking how I managed to shoot this because I think a lot of people are still trying to figure out what media to use to record this resolution and this format and so for me I've been only able to record 10 seconds at a time on this Lexa CFast card. After that it just stopped recording but that was enough for me to shoot a few clips and to make a video out of it to show you guys. It was more a test than an actual video and I would like to be able to shoot longer but I've tried the Samsung T5, I've tried the CFast and so far I can't get past that kind of 10 second mark. So regarding the internal mics, I'd say they're pretty good, um, a lot better than the original Pocket but I wouldn't recommend them for proper audio. They're good for scratch audio, Atmos or anything like that. It's good to get ambient sound when you're out, outside shooting. Everything I've been shooting so far has been recorded with the internal mics and it sound, sounds fine. There's no um, hissing, there's no clipping whatsoever like the previous pocket. So yeah, whilst they're not the best mics, um, they're pretty decent for such a small camera, so I'm pretty happy with it. I think the question I got asked the most is what lens do I use? So I'm using the Lumix 12-35 2.8 V1. I know there's been a few complaints um, on YouTube where some people have had trouble with the IS, didn't work properly, have read the same thing on forums as well. But for me, I haven't noticed anything, anything weird or anything that should have not happened. I think this is a great lens um, for pretty much everything. If you had to pick only one, I'd suggest to pick this one. So that gives you about uh, the equivalent of a 24 to 70 on a full frame. It's very useful, 2.8 constant, it's got IS. I am considering of getting a prime, 
to get a more cinematic look. So if you have any recommendations, just let me know in the comments below. I've also linked my whole kit so you guys can see what I use and what I've been using in the videos. So a question I've been getting a lot is how do I grade my videos? So the videos that I shot on BMPCC 4K have been graded in a very simple way. So I just shot log, imported the footage in DaVinci, apply the LUT, which is the Blackmagic LUT from Pocket Film to Extended Video. And after that, I've just exported the files and did a few tweaks in Final Cut, such as curves, a bit of contrast, saturation, and try to get a look that I was happy with, but I also didn't spend hours building it. I was just curious to see how the footage reacted. I will try over the next few weeks and months to build my own collection of presets like I used to for the pocket. And I think this will take a while, but it's very easy to grade. The files are very um, strong, the codecs are very strong. So you can get to, you know, you can pretty much create any look that you want. But for those videos, I've just kept it simple. For a lot of my videos, I also use Film Convert in Final Cut Pro. Um, which is a good, it's a good way to get that cinematic look. Sometimes you add a bit of grain, you can pick your film base, um, which is really nice. I've been using this for a few years now, especially with the pocket. I found this camera to be not easier to grade, but to be more flexible. This is a camera that is a bit more, has a bit more depth than the original pocket. So it might be trickier to grade, but you have a lot more flexibility and a lot more options than the previous one. I found this to be a lot more consistent too with the colors and the image quality. They had, I remember like shooting with the original pocket and having a few color shifting, a few problems with, you know, like consistency throughout a shoot. But so far this has been pretty, pretty good. A few of you have messaged me to know about the weight of the camera. So the camera is about 700 grams, just over 700 grams. With this lens, for example, that would be a one kilo combo, which is pretty good. Feels lighter than it looks. I've had a few friends over, they, they had a look at the camera and their first reaction was, this is a lot lighter than it looks. But it doesn't feel cheap, it just feels lighter. So regarding the battery, I've been getting about 45 to 50 minutes on a genuine Canon battery. Being able to record like almost an hour on such a small battery, you'd have to carry a few to go through a day, but I'm fine with that. Another very popular question that I've been asked is how sharp and how good is a 120fps? So I've answered that in the review that I made a few days ago, but I thought I'd talk about it just a bit more. I think uh, it's not the sharpest footage for sure, but it still has that nice quality and I found the footage to be easier to grade than the actual 4K. I don't know if it's because it's less sharp, it's just a bit more soft. It felt like in between the first pocket and this one in 4K, if that makes sense. So I'm pretty happy with it. I wouldn't buy this camera just for the 120. I think it's a nice feature to have and it's very useful, but I would stick to the 60p unless there's a situation that requires to be shot at 120 and then it's more than fine. It's still sharp enough to be used even alongside 4K, you know, for quick extreme slow motion shots or extreme situations, which I think is really good. So yes, it is good, but I wouldn't buy this camera for the 120 FPS. I think that's it for today, guys. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos about the BMPCC 4K or any other cameras. Uh, I'll be posting a lot more travel content as well very soon. Let me know in the comments below if you want to know anything else. I can either answer in the comments or I can do a part two if there's more questions. Also, if you have any questions about myself or the work that we do, feel free to, to ask that as well. I'm more than happy to talk about it. I'll probably start doing more reviews and talk about gear as well in the next video. So feel free to have a look at my whole kit um, in the description below. If there's anything you'd like to know about any product or any cameras, just let me know. Also, just wanted to say thank you guys for watching our videos, for all the comments and positive feedback. It's been really great. We're still new on YouTube. So thanks for staying with us. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.